Hey guys, welcome to Sim Racing Paddock. I'm William Marsh, and let's talk about frame rates. Now, frame rates are important in a lot of different forms of media movie, TV, and yep, video games. To put it simply, a frame is a picture, and video in general is a series of photos lined up and run in sequence. Two common frame rates that we see in videos are 24 and 30 frames per second. In Hollywood movies and other films, we see a frame rate of 24 frames per second being the most common. For non-fiction stuff such as races and documentaries, we see a frame rate of 30 frames per second. However, gaming is kind of different. We usually say that 30 frames per second is the minimum and 60 frames per second or higher is ideal. Now, I decided to test out a few different frame rates. Why is a lower frame rate more difficult? So let's take a look. So for this video, I decided to test out the three most common frame rates that we see in media, 24 frames per second, 30 frames per second, and 60 frames per second. I decided to throw 24 frames per second into the mix because that is something that we do commonly see in movies and other films, but we don't really see it in sim racing. So. I decided to fire up iRacing because they have the ability to lock down a frame rate and have it pretty steady. I fired up the IndyCar at Sonoma Raceway because that is one of my most proficient combos I have in iRacing, and I decided to hit the track with 24 frames per second. And oh my gosh, it is painful to drive. It felt like driving a slideshow, and it was really easy to find myself missing an apex or just overshooting a corner. Now the question is, why is that the case? Well, the simple answer to that is, you are losing time to react. Imagine you are driving at 204.545 miles an hour. Now, why that specific number? Because at that speed, you are driving the length of a football field in one second, aka 300 feet per second. If you are driving at that speed with a frame rate of 60 frames per second, one frame is going to be 1 60th of a second, and each frame is going to simulate 5 feet of distance being traveled. If you cut the frame rate in half to 30, that distance per frame is going to double to 10 feet per frame. And then if you go down to the 24 frames per second frame rate, that number is going to jump to 12 and a half feet per frame. That means that if you are driving at 24 frames per second, you are effectively losing seven and a half feet per frame of time and distance, which you can use to react to car's conditions and things like that. So driving at 24 frames per second is definitely less than ideal. So why not take a look at 30 frames per second which is an industry standard for video games. So switching over to 30 frames per second is a little smoother. You can tell there is not as much choppiness in the steering wheel and in the driving. You can see everything feels a little more fluid. In turn, 30 frames per second does feel drivable and not as disorienting. And I believe that is partly due to the fact that a lot of video games we play nowadays are still in 30 frames per second. As mentioned before, in 30 frames per second, you are going to be simulating 10 feet per frame. That's definitely improvement over the 12 and a half feet per frame that we were getting with 24 frames per second, but that's still quite a bit of track that we are missing that we could afford to use to react to different things going on. However, 30 frames per second is definitely drivable. It is serviceable under conditions. However, Driving in 60 frames per second is definitely what I would say is the recommended minimum frame rate to be driving in a racing sim environment. If you look here at the 60 frames per second, it is buttery smooth. It is incredibly fluid. At 60 frames per second, it almost looks like the car is actually faster. However, if we put the two frame rates side by side, you will see that the cars are covering the same distance in relatively the same time. The 60 frames per second just looks so much smoother than the 24 frames per second, 
that it is night and day different. The other major benefit of going with 60 frames per second is you have more time to react. You have a larger window of opportunity to catch a slide, to nail an apex, to get that breaking point just right. If you're approaching, say, turn seven in Sonoma Raceway, and you're driving at a lower frame rate, you might have 10 or so frames to react to the perfect braking point. If you're driving at 60 frames per second, you might have 30 to 40 frames to react to that braking point. That is just an invaluable asset to have at your disposal to be able to perform at a higher level. Also, in turn, you can tell that through this experiment, I got gradually faster as I was increasing the frame rate. Now, this was just a simple experiment. Your mileage may vary, but for me, the higher frame rate led to me being able to maximize the performance of the car and get the best lap times I could. I bet if you spent a couple hours at 24 frames per second, you could easily adapt to that, but it would still be a less than ideal situation. You'd have a lot less margin for error, you can make more mistakes, and it just wouldn't be nearly as smooth as 30 frames or 60. But all in all, I hope this experiment helped you gain a better understanding of frame rate and how it works in a sim racing environment. Thank you for watching, and also check out the Sim Racing Paddock where we're working on building some community events and also the Sim Racing System Online Championship. For the Sim Racing Paddock, I'm William Marsh, and you have a great rest of your day.